Hello, welcome to all of you. Some people are still logging in, so we are waiting a few more minutes, but uh, we are about to start. Welcome to our third webinar in this series on food challenges in the Mediterranean area. Our third topic today is reducing food waste. We're going to spend an hour and a half together until 5.30 p.m. You can uh, complete your name by adding to it your organization so everyone knows uh, where you come from. In the chat, you can introduce yourself and your organization and your initiative so everyone knows uh, who is attending the webinar. There is an interpretation organized in French, English, and Arabic. You can click on the little uh, globe below to choose the language that suits you best. During the webinar, there will be two short breaks for the interpretation since it is live. Two short breaks during which you can ask questions in the chat, for instance. For those of you who just joined us, you can rename yourself by adding your structure, your organization next to your name, so everyone knows who is attending. You can introduce yourself in the chat room uh, as well to present your organization and your initiative. We're just about to start. This webinar is being recorded and you can find it later on on our YouTube channel, which is called Let's Food. Just a couple more minutes and then we'll be able to start. For those of you who just join us, you can choose different languages, French, English, or Arabic. We have a live interpretation today. Please rename yourself by adding the name of your organization and you can introduce yourself in the chat as well as your initiative. Welcome. We're here together in this third webinar until 5.30 p.m. It's part of a series of six. We worked in partnership with the Ministry, uh, Foreign Ministry of European Affairs and the uh, UNESCO Chair in World Food System. Let's Food is an association which helps territories build together sustainable, resilient food systems. We worked around the Mediterranean. We have three different areas. We help communities build um, policies related to uh, local food. Uh, we help international cooperation as well. Number two, we have an inventory of initiatives and publication on a platform called Let's Food IDs. 
for public and private initiative. The idea is to help everyone everywhere. So these are translated as much as possible in English and Spanish. We also publish on important subjects, for instance, um, European local food policies in Europe. It's interesting to see what happens somewhere else. Number three, training and capacity building. We train uh, elected officials on food sustainability, but also for technicians and uh, university personnel with the idea of uh, training animators, which are going to train on uh, sustainable food policies later on. That was uh, the object of our webinar number one, which you can find on our YouTube channel. Here's a presentation of our team. There's a board member and many volunteers. It's a team of five people you can see here. Louison, Camille, Annel, and Lana are part of my team. Uh, Louison is going to present something on uh, food waste. Our partners are the UNESCO Chair in World Food System, the Association NEED, and the French Ministry of Foreign and European Affairs. These are precious partners because they can help us communicate and they all work around the Mediterranean or on a decentralized cooperation. Yes, for those who just join in, please turn off your microphone, but introduce yourself in the chat so we know who's here. So we have two interpreters, Sylvana Monser for French and Arabic and Sophie Baclain for English and French. Thank you to you both. Our goals in the Mediterranean are to speed up food transition in the Mediterranean by supporting uh, engaged actors, helping them connect, interconnect. We want to build a partnership. We help them identify funders to uh, help realize some projects. So this is our webinar program. This is the third one, uh, once a month. Next one is producing local high quality food on March 13th, market opportunities for local farmers on April 17th and fighting food insecurity on May 15th. Uh, each time we try to have speakers from associations around the Mediterranean to help uh, illustrate our topic. Last month, we had uh, initiatives from Milan and Barcelona and France. So now we are moving it again. Just would like to introduce some definitions so we know we're all, all talking about the same things. What is the local food system? It comes from, it covers uh, protecting uh, the land and also creating a, a governance with local actors. So. The idea is to uh, limit artificialization to help new farmers settle. We want to uh, support agricultural employment, but we would like to support extensive diversified farms, which are autonomous in agroecology. Once these exist, we would like to develop uh, the logistics around it, that is to say short local supply chains, try to adapt production to the consumer's needs and 
make some uh, have uh, try to have local consumption around the cities especially and try to help intermediate that are aware of all these uh, issues so we want uh, the farmers to uh, make a good living we also want to support change in food habits uh, local consumption, seasonal products uh, with no chemicals and possibly less meat. We want to fight food waste, which is our topic today, uh, reduce waste and losses along the whole chain and try to reuse or recover waste. So the idea is to build a new governance uh, for local food. We want all the citizens and all the actors to build a local food strategy. Here's another definition for sustainable food system, uh, which was a definition taken from Nicola Bricas, uh, based on uh, the UN FAO or Biodiversity International IPES food. So what is a sustainable food system? It is one that protects the environment and biodiversity without burning out new non-renewable resources. Uh, it's a system that enables to uh, spread values among all actors to promote social cohesion and to promote trust in the system so all citizens can participate in its development. So these definitions are very important to us and can help us start on the same ground. So today's topic is going to be presented by Louison Lanson, which is the co-founder of Let's Food, and she's going to present you how to reduce food waste. Hello, everyone. I would like to give you some figures and definitions on food waste and uh, agricultural losses with a focus on the Mediterranean and on France as well, before the other speakers uh, have their word. So, some definitions. What are food losses? The difference between food loss and food waste. The food loss is a reduction, reducing quantity or quality of food stuff throughout the value chain, whereas food waste is foodstuff losses by choice or by neglect. There are three types of food waste and losses, quantitative, qualitative, or economic. We can lose in quantity, in quality, which make, means that the quantity is reduced as well. And also it, it is an economic loss if the products um, uh, look bad, they don't, they cannot be sold or used as well. Their value decreases. Some figures to start with. Uh, on the global level each year one third of all the food produced for human consumption is lost or wasted whereas uh, 700 million people suffer hunger in the world so there is a growing food insecurity globally but there's also an increasing food waste in france it means 150 kilos of food that is wasted each year per person, uh, some are more concerned than others. 
In the Middle East and in North Africa, this quantity uh, increases to 250 kilograms per person. So this is a, a growing challenge in those countries. And it amounts to uh, a, the great value of $60 billion uh, attributed to food waste. Each actor in the value chain has um, a responsibility to reduce waste. Each member of the chain contributes to waste. Here are the figures for France. We don't have uh, world figures or specific figures for the Mediterranean, but it, this is the example for France. So the production is uh, responsible for 32% of waste. Then comes the transformation of the products and food with 21%. Then the step of consumption at home, it's 19%. Everything you throw away at home. Then in the restaurant, there's also some food being thrown away about 14%. It can be uh, in schools, in businesses, or in a uh, regular restaurant. And then distribution in by 13%. What are the causes of losses and waste? Uh, first, pests and illnesses at the production level. Two, rough handling of the products, which make them go bad. Three, deficient packaging or conditions of storage that are not what they should be regarding temperature, for instance. Five, lack of cold storage rooms on markets, for instance. Next, the bad stock management in supermarkets or at home. Uh, next, products being taken away because of the way they look. If they are not, uh, if they don't look what they should look like, according to the general meaning, they are being uh, set aside. And last but not least, the social and cultural habits. Sometimes if you're wealthy and have a lot of food, then you are more inclined to uh, wasting it. So these are just examples, of course. What are the levers to reduce food waste and to value food uh, leftovers? There are two different strategies. First, to avoid and reduce food waste along the chain. And the second one is uh, on the right, to value food scraps which cannot be prevented. So, number one, how to avoid and reduce food waste. There are different methods. Uh, the change in agricultural methods, uh, change the harvest calendar, uh, work on the storage conditions, how to plan the purchase orders to make sure you don't have too much stock that are not being sold. Uh, how you can um, fix machines for grading produce with more flexibility, the distribution, uh, the consumption. Uh, you can also organize some compost, which can be given to individuals or to farmers. That's a way to value food scraps on the right. Uh, you can organize a collect for the, to produce um, biogas, with uh, some specific drop-off points that can be used for methanation. So this is the collection uh, for biogas production. Let's focus on France. It's the French uh, paradox because we implemented some interesting policies to reduce food waste and food insecurity. Uh, 
but th there is unfortunately uh, some kind of paradox because some laws uh, are sometimes um, go sometimes one again another because some laws were implemented in 1987, 2010, and 2016. Um, some laws uh, promote the idea of giving away the surpluses, or sometimes it's even uh, coercive to associations. So that's the idea of the Garo law in 2016. But in fact, feeding the needy becomes a lever for the agri-food industry, enabling them to engage in a circular economy. It's a means for them to reduce their taxes because the donations they make to uh, associations uh, are being tax exempted. So it's an advantage for the businesses. It enables them to dispose of products which would soon, uh, they would soon become uh, food scraps for the business. So in fact, it's going to be the job of the associations to uh, take those, these, uh, this old food away. So surprisingly, these uh, initiatives tend to reduce food waste tend to challenge, in fact, food aid organizations. Uh, they are, they depend on these donations. So that's why I, I talked about a, a French paradox about this. Focus on, on France again. Uh, there's a law against food waste in favor of circular economy, and it is mandatory to value, value bio-waste. So it becomes mandatory to sort bio-waste, add sort for those um, businesses who produce more than 10 tons of bio-waste per year since January 1st, 2016. Uh, So you can recycle with a compost individually or collectively or through a collection uh, organized by the city authorities. So it's an interesting frame for the authorities to organize uh, collections. And this will in the end uh, go, this compost will go to the local producers and sometimes some uh, city quarters can be uh, heated through energies made from those uh, food waste. So this slide is about fighting food waste around the Mediterranean, the Medalim project. There are different initiatives. I talked about the low framework in France. That's not the case everywhere. Around the Mediterranean, sometimes it is uh, associations who take that role. Here are some examples. In Morocco, in Casablanca, there's a research project by INRA on what happens after harvest. So the food losses in the production. In France by uh, Grenoble. I talked about the public initiatives, but there's also some businesses. Um, there is an initiative on integration through employment to transform unsold products into canned food. So they can be uh, used and eaten later on. In Croatia, uh, the, the municipality organized a separate collection of bio waste. It's called the Waste Management Action Plan. In Lebanon, there's a business 
who collects compost, which is then uh, being sold to farmers in Turkey. In Izmir, the municipality uh, composts waste from businesses and distribution to local farmers. Uh, they sell it to the local farmers. Last example, in Italy, the Siena province has designed specific menus at the school canteen, menus being tailored to reduce food waste and they raise awareness among among children as well. So we're going to have thank you for listening to this uh, presentation. Thank you very much, uh, Louison. Many of you introduced yourself in the chat. Please rename yourself if you haven't done so already to add your, the name of your organization. We're going to have a short break uh, for the interpreters while you do that. See you in five minutes. Ok, bon, je vous propose de, de reprendre. Euh, donc, merci beaucoup à nos intervenants. Donc, euh, cette fois-ci, normalement, on va partir en Jordanie. Alors, on, le docteur Marvat n'est pas présent encore. Donc, euh, on espère qu'elle nous rejoindra sur la fin euh, en France et ensuite en Albanie. Euh, donc, euh, avec le docteur Marvat, Madame Melissa Kanan et M. Louis Deliou qui va euh, nous présenter euh, l'exemple de la Banque alimentaire en Albanie. Et je vais leur laisser la parole tout de suite. Et je vais laisser la parole à Mélissa Canan. Merci beaucoup. 
Alors, bonjour tout le monde, je me présente euh, Meïsa Kanan, je suis euh, enseignante et présidente enseignante à l'université de Tizi Ouzou et présidente de l'association de compostage et de recyclage. Donc, euh, je vais vous présenter une part de notre euh, travail qu'on fait ici euh, dans notre région. Donc, euh, l'intitulé de la présentation euh, est la mise en place des nouveaux schémas de gestion des déchets euh, ménagers assimilés dans des établissements scolaires de la ville de Tizi Ouzou. Donc, Wilaya qui veut dire un peu département ou région. Euh... So, here's the beginning of the presentation of Melissa Canan. I'm going to tell you about my issues, then the results, and then um, the conclusions of our initiative. So, you have to know that uh, there are many, many uh, household and similar waste that are produced each year, 200,000 tons. And these come from primary, middle and secondary school. This is mainly organic waste and 80% uh, are organic waste, yes, because this is due to the poor quality of meals. These waste are taken to the technical landfill center of Tiziozu, and this causes nuisance such as leachate and greenhouse gases. Our goals are the following. One, raise the awareness and help stakeholders in school in sorting and composting waste. Number two, waste quantitative characterization and typology. And three, how to value organic waste on site through composting. Here is the region uh, of our study. Algeria is quite a big country. In red on the left, you see uh, the region of Tizi Ouzou. And the other colors are the other projects we worked on. So our method is to raise awareness among school employees in the classrooms and at the school canteen. Here are some pictures to show how we raised awareness. On this picture, you see how we train the school children, the pupils, how to make compost. This is a presentation, all the activities we do in schools, how we work with the children. Step number two, how to identify and quantify waste from school canteens. We sort them and then we take the organic uh, waste. So they come from from food leftovers and peelings that are collected from the canteen. There are two different possibilities. If possible, we put the waste in compost bins or we just pile them up. So there are different techniques, be a waste with sawdust or olive pomace or paper and cardboard, but in fact, this was not uh, satisfactory. So we had to, to add uh, sodas to a paper or cardboard, then it worked better. Here's a picture of the pile compost if we don't have uh, bins. And the uh, compost bins are made with uh, used pallets. So we don't want to to spend uh, too much money on compost bins. It's good to reuse pallets. So here are the results. You can see that the size has diminished and you see how uh, the waste turns into this brown color. In week two on the left, in week eight on the, on the right, uh, here's the evaluation of temperature. This was made by a German laboratory we did this work at university, so we could uh, measure everything, temperature and pH, just to show you that the results uh, were satisfactory. 
with the different methods. Uh, here's the conclusion. The low quality of meals results in much organic waste. So it's about uh, 1,400 kilos in a week with a ratio of 0, 0,3 per pupil or uh, employee. So the valorization of organic waste through composting is the most cost-effective and ecological way. Composting enables on-site valorization of organic waste without landfilling. And it's also uh, an extra school activity for pupils. Not all schools have the money to uh, create uh, activities. So that's a, a good idea to keep the children busy. Thank you very much for listening to my presentation. Uh, you will have some time to ask questions later on. Let's listen to the next presentation in Albania with Luis Deliu, who is going to present us his initiative. So Luis Deliu is... Hello, everybody. I'm Luis uh, from Food Bank Albania. Um, I'm leading this uh, organization that has been found uh, 10 years ago. We are located uh, in the uh, main city of Albania, in Tirana. And uh, we, as a Food Bank Albanian, has been found in, in the two precincts, uh, based in uh, Article 25.1, uh, of the right of the food for the people. And uh, the second one is uh, based on uh, SDG 12.3 uh, to fighting food loss and food waste. This is the main activities. Uh, all our activities are based in these two principles. Uh, to fighting uh, food loss and food waste and uh, uh, saving food and all the amount of food that is saving through our activities has been uh, distributed to the people in need for food. So just overview uh, in Albanian situations, uh, we are a small country, um, about uh, 2.8 uh, million people. Uh, the main uh, economy is based in agriculture, productions and in tourism. Uh, so some figures that are official, but sometimes uh, this can be uh, changing. Uh, agriculture employees uh, took 34% uh, uh, of the national workforce. And uh, the agriculture is about 17% of our GDP. That means that uh, uh, agriculture productions took uh, uh, a specific uh, uh, point in our economy. So Albania is well known now uh, for uh, the uh, biological agri-food uh, production. Uh, we as a nation export a lot of agriculture. So that means that uh, in Albania, the productions of agriculture uh, are uh, in huge amounts, let's say, compared as a nation. Uh, the two periods that uh, in Albania uh, we have agriculture foods uh, products that are uh, April till July and September till December. So. Uh, in the first period, April uh, to July, uh, we produce from the field. And the second uh, period, uh, the productions of the uh, agri-food uh, came from the greenhouses. So uh, these are the main uh, uh, period that uh, we have a lot of uh, food productions. 
Um, in Albanian, uh, 50%, 58.5% uh, uh, of the the budget of the families goes uh, for food. This means that the economy is not uh, in good conditions. Uh, sometimes in uh, uh, some families that are uh, in needs, that are in poor conditions, uh, sometimes this percent uh, goes uh, till to 80%. 80% of the uh, family budget goes for food. Uh, we have uh, figures, official figures, that 22% uh, of the populations uh, are in risk of poverty. But uh, these figures is uh, much be higher uh, in reality. Uh, so in these conditions that uh, uh, in one side, we as a nation produce a lot of uh, uh, fruit and vegetables, uh, and in other side, we have uh, economic situation that uh, uh, the poor level is uh, is in high, let's say, uh, in, in Albania. So, uh, in the middle of this, a food bank Albanians came and born as a solution for Albanian people. So uh, Food Bank Albania started uh, in uh, before 10 years ago, but fresh food project is specially based on the agriculture foods. So we start this, uh, this project in uh, 2017 as a pilot project. And uh, the first donations that we took from the agriculture businesses, there was just three crates with uh, with kiwi. Uh, that is about calculated about 36 uh, kilograms. So this is how start this this uh, this project. Uh, the main cities in Albania that produced and uh, uh, has a lot of uh, agriculture products is Tirana, which is the main city of Albania, and uh, about 50% of the population lives in Tirana level, which is uh, the capital city, and uh, also has uh, uh, a lot of food that uh, uh, is present in, in the trade and uh, uh, in this area. So there are and uh, uh, Fier, Lucia and Berat, uh, three other cities that uh, in these cities are uh, a lot of businesses and uh, greenhouses. There are the cities that produce a lot of uh, fruit and vegetables. So uh, this project is uh, focused in uh, this uh, four cities. We can see some uh, a picture from the first week of the uh, these projects. We located in the uh, uh, this we are in a main trade of agriculture in Tirana. Uh, we collaboration with the administrations of this uh, trade. We took a place and uh, we we start to see the possibility to collaborate with the businesses that donate, uh, uh, let's say, fresh food. We call fresh food. So as it is known, uh, forty percent of the food in global area uh, it is. Uh, Considered it as a food loss or food waste. Uh, so, in this uh, percent, Albania has its parts of the person. So, so in that point, that uh, we had a lot of, as a nation, we have uh, a lot of food production 
in agriculture, so there is a percent of the food that uh, goes for, uh, can be calculated as a food waste. So we are focused through these projects, fresh foods, uh, to save that amount of uh, agriculture food that uh, can be calculated as the food loss. So in partnership with uh, the business that are in this uh, sector, uh, now we can count more than uh, 30 business in uh, Albania uh, that they trade or they uh, uh, export uh, fruit and vegetable. So in partnership with these businesses, uh, we have tried to save uh, in these last years about uh, 150 tons of fruit and vegetables per year. So this is a good uh, result for us, but the situation uh, in the main businesses that export in, uh, fruit and vegetables, uh, the situation is that uh, there is much to do for saving foods because uh, we are facing and uh, we are at level that about uh, the 30 or 40 percent of that amount that uh, we have uh, seen in this sector uh, we are just reached up to uh, 40 percent so there are a lot of food that goes for for wasting uh, how it worked this uh, this project so we have uh, seen that uh, uh, the main business that exporting uh, uh, fruit and vegetables first they uh, took this product uh, product from the farmers and in their uh, business they make a selection in first quality that this uh, amount goes for export and second quality or third quality remain at the business that is the target of fresh food project. So the second quality means that it is that about 70 till to 99% it is the first quality. That means that uh, this amount we try to save and to collect and then we can uh, distribute for consumer to the people we need. So fresh food uh, collaborate with uh, uh, our business partner to, to save this part of amount. Uh, the beneficiary of the of the food that we try to save through uh, fresh food, there are about more than 20 social sub kitchens or uh, social uh, centers in all over uh, Albania. Uh, also, this is calculated about more than 2000 uh, hot meal that serve in these centers. Two main success case that we have that mm -hmm. this project this project has uh, uh, its uh, uh, effect is uh, one soup kitchens that uh, uh, started their activities uh, two times a week with 50 people and through our fresh food projects uh, these sub kitchens goes to feed 300 person six days per week. And another uh, social uh, kindergarten, uh, it started uh, with uh, to serve 20 children and uh, the impact of, uh, through the impact of fresh food project, now they are serving uh, 60 uh, children uh, that are located in the uh, village uh, near of Tirana, uh, which are not uh, came from the uh, the children came from the uh, the poorest 
families uh, in this area. So uh, all these projects uh, has a cost uh, about uh, 20,000 euro uh, in a month, but the value that the food that we save uh, through this project go to the amount of uh, 150 tons that has a value uh, in euro about uh, 120,000 uh, uh, euro. So the main target for the this year for this project is to um, collect uh, 200 tons. Uh, the main uh, challenge is for us. Uh, it is to cover the cost that this project needs. And another one, it is uh, one thing that we are fighting a lot in Albania. We have some years that we are, we are pushing a lot uh, about VAT tax because the situation in Albania is that the government does not know to the business the VAT tax in food donations. That means that the business, if they uh, donate food, they need to pay to the government VAT tax. But if they let the food can expire and they can be throw it away, the government turn back the VAT tax. This situation is not a normal thing, but so we are fighting a lot about this that uh, will bring a lot of help for us and for business that the amount of food can be donated and not uh, be targeted for uh, wasting. So this is uh, our projects in overall. So, uh, I'll finish here. Thank you. Merci beaucoup pour uh, cette présentation. Apparently, the Dr. Uh, Mervat Almerat, who was supposed to tell us about what happens in the Greater Amman municipality, is not here today. Um, that's what happens when you present something in live. Uh, maybe, Louison, you can uh, tell us uh, what we do with the UN Food uh, Administration, with what we do between uh, about the cooperation between Anman and uh, Milan. So Louison is going to tell us about our initiative, but then uh, maybe uh, some of you can prepare some questions for the speakers as well. Yes, so the project we work on with Aman and Milan municipalities about uh, reducing food waste. It's a project co-funded by FNOO. Uh, upon the request from Amman City. Uh, they contacted Milan municipality in Italy because they have experience on food waste and uh, recycling. Um, to support them through their experience, this is uh, to help the train the elected officials worked on this project. So us, athletes, we at Let's Food, we try to facilitate this uh, collaboration between the two cities. And we want to help them make the inventory of food waste in Jordan and um, build a strategy with all the actors over there. So uh, to sum up, in Amman, they have uh, different issues related to food sustainability. About uh, food waste, we talked about it a lot because a lot of food is being lost at the distribution. 
so there's really something to look at in retail and in wholesale uh, market as well. As I told you about the different causes uh, earlier, the storage conditions that are not adapted, rough handling, uh, bad stock management. So this has this is something we we observed. And so we want to go beyond this diagnosis and see how to fight food waste on those wholesale markets. So we want to cooperate with a governing a structure of on the wholesale market to try to work with them on this issue so they can uh, rely with all the merchants there. Our goal is to go beyond that and look at the food waste on the other members of the food supply chain and try to work with the Amman municipality uh, overall. Uh, they are very um, engaged in this uh, on this topic, and so we will uh, publish some information on our social networks. Uh, if you're interested uh, in this project, well, uh, yes, it's too bad that Dr. Marvet couldn't be with here with us today because she had prepared a very uh, complete presentation. But thank you, Louisan, for your input. Do you have questions? Uh, are there questions among the participants? If you want to, if you want to ask a question, to ask a question, just uh, do so. If you want to give some detail in France, um, maybe some of you started talking, describing their initiative in the chat. I have maybe some questions for our speakers. Tell us about your, maybe the keys to success, or possibly if you want to tell me about your funders, maybe some other people can uh, write down some good ideas. And then another question, if you wanted to start a new cooperation tomorrow, what would be your needs? Why, what would you like to, uh, to talk about? Uh, with which regions or with which uh, cities in your own country, maybe? Uh, Melissa, can you tell us something about those questions? The keys to success and the funders and your needs in terms of cooperation? Uh, now, for us, the funding, the financing is done with our own means. We choose those who have a budget because we don't need so much money. It's, it's more help that we need, in fact. And we use uh, used pallets, as I told you, for the bins. We don't buy uh, sawdust, we collect it from uh, the sewing industry. And then now uh, from the olive production, we get the, the uh, olive uh, pomade, so we can take it from the oil businesses. Uh, we also work in the villages and in the different city quarters uh, in a shim based on sorting. Uh, we work a lot on about on composting. 
and there are about 20% of waste that can be that can be directly recycled and the rest is turned into compost so we don't need that sh that much money we we ask each city quarter uh, to help and we have no specific funder actually what are your needs in terms of cooperation uh yes with cooperation uh, we could Uh, work on a wider region because so far we really work, we only work into the regions which are the most in need because they are, they really need the help. But maybe if we had funders, we could go uh, beyond that and help other regions. Last question before we take a short, short break for the for the interpreters. What are your relations with the uh, municipality? Uh, well, in fact, we work at the university, and so they they know us already. Uh, they acknowledge what we've been doing so far since 2012. So they they respect us for that. And sometimes municipalities are like facing a wall. They have no solutions in their hands. So in Algeria, we don't have too much pollution, but we have too much waste. That is true. It is not well organized. And and more than half of the city budget is uh, devoted to uh, waste collection. And the technical landfill centers uh, is not a sustainable solution. So they are often uh, too much filled and then people are throwing away their waste elsewhere. And this is creating problems. So then they, the municipality call us at the university and ask it for a solution. So this is, this is why these cities call us for help. Not all cities, uh, are interested. Those who have the means and the money to deal with that uh, don't, do not necessarily see the point in working with us. Most cities who work with us uh, are in need for help. Those in need uh, are in a state in, in crisis and they want our help. On from 67 uh, cities around uh, Tizio Zoo, uh, more than half of them, about half of them, uh, are having a trouble with waste. I hope this answers your question. Yes, thank you very much. Let's have a three minute break. Uh, prepare your question. Oui, voilà. Si, si, très bien. Merci beaucoup. Okay. Euh, merci beaucoup. On va prendre trois minutes. Euh, okay. Est-ce que si certains ont des questions à, à poser à nos intervenants ou souhaitent intervenir, n'hésitez pas euh, à vous manifester euh, dans le chat. Merci beaucoup, Mélissa. Et Nous on revient vers vous. Ok, très bien, parfait.
So I'm going to ask those same questions to Louis. What, has, what are your keys to success and what are your needs in terms of cooperation? What, how is your relationship with the municipality, municipal authorities? Tell us. Can you can you hear us, uh, Louis? Sorry, uh, I mm. do not uh, hear the translation in English. In English. Oh, no problem. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I, we... I didn't understand the, the question. It is related with me. Yes. Uh, bon. Uh, Pardon. Je reprends en français. Um, la question, c'est est-ce uh, que vous pouvez nous... tell us about your keys to success? On your project, how could you inspire similar project? How about the funding? And where did you find the funders? And tell us about a cooperation project. What what do you need in terms of cooperation? Sorry, Mr. Sophie, uh, I do not hear the translation here at my figures. So I hear only the uh, in French. Uh, I, uh, did, I, did you select the understand. English translation in the... Uh, yeah, you have to see English translation. You have to click on English in the interpretation. Sorry, but uh... is the translation still working in from English to French? Mm -hmm. Well, maybe I can translate the question, but I want to make sure that you can okay. also translate should, from English should, to French. Should, should be better. Okay, can you give us the the key? Uh, uh, the key ways to success uh, your initiative, like uh, what are the, the main uh, things to remember if you want to success this kind of initiative? Maybe we can start with this one and then we'll see. The, the second question was about the funding. So if you can explain where does your funding come from? Okay. Uh, so uh, the success of fresh food uh, uh, is based on the amount of, of uh, the food that that remains and that is target for for wasting so uh we try a lot to have a good relations with uh, businesses uh so saving food in albania it is a new concept so normally the business uh treat the food that remain or do not uh, sell in a trade so normally the mentality is to throw it away. Uh, so we are we are working a lot in this in this sector to uh, uh, make uh, sensibilizations of the business that uh, uh, this amount of food that uh, they do not trade do not let and uh, throw it away or to, to be a, a food waste. So uh, the main success things uh, in this project is relations with business and uh, how we go to the business uh, to have a good relations and uh, to have a sensibilization for saving food. Uh, about the second questions uh, for funding, uh, we have some uh, NGOs partners based in Netherlands uh, that they have uh, supporting us through years. So this is the main donor that uh, uh, support us and our activities. We as a food bank Albanian, uh, we are part of uh, FEBA, Federation European Banks, uh, food banks, uh, but uh, we are being part of this uh, only in uh, 2023. So we have just one year that be part of this 
uh, Federation. Uh, we have some uh, phones from FEBA, but uh, small things, uh, basic to support us uh, for logistic uh, things. Did, did you hear the translation in English this time? Understand me? Uh, do you have the translation in English? Uh, um, no, <laughs> sorry. Uh, okay, so uh, so you already uh, put, uh, put in place a cooperation with the Netherlands. Maybe you could tell us about the link with the local authorities, with the city? Uh, uh, the authority in Albania. Yeah. So, uh, yes, uh, we support uh, uh, six uh, soup kitchens of uh, municipality, uh, municipality of Tirana with food. So, amount of food that we see through fresh food goes to these soup kitchens. But the relations uh, for legal things, like uh, VAT tax or things that are still in uh, in beginnings, so we are not uh, enter in such of collaborations to to be part of the groups or lobbying groups that uh, we can uh, work with them to to reach uh, these targets or this. Uh, uh, things basic on on the laws. Yes. Okay. Thank you very much for your answer. Merci. I'll turn back to French. Are there other people who would like to ask questions? Too bad that that the person from Amman could not participate in the end. Do you have other questions maybe in the chat or among the participants? Um, Melissa or Luis, do you want? Que Melissa or Luis, vous voulez ajouter quelque chose? Do you want to add something? I don't know if you have any questions I can answer. But the main thing for uh, our uh, activities that will help a lot is just the law uh, on the AP tax. So the situation in Albania uh, is that that I, uh, I, I say a little bit that uh, the government, if uh, will change the law of the AP tax in food donations, will help a lot in saving food and uh, helping the people in need. Merci beaucoup. Melissa, do you want to say a word of conclusion? Yes, the closing, we would like to keep on working uh, on our territory in our region or maybe across the whole country and in all the developing countries because the, this problem happens everywhere. So that would be a nice goal. Yes, in fact, the, the issues are similar in different countries. So it's very important to share experiences. Yes, there's so many things to say on this topic. That's true. Thank you very much. Uh, congratulations on your implication. Uh, closing on our side, uh, as a follow-up to the webinars, um, uh, we would like to uh, publish a deliverable about funding, and we would like to publish some leads for food strategies in Mediterranean territories. It will be a a summary of these webinars with uh, stories from the different speakers. So next time, uh, next webinar is in 
on April 17th or maybe March, uh, you'll find it on our social networks. Yes, yes. Oh, no, it's March. It's March 13th. Sorry. It's on producing local qu high quality food. Please keep in touch and uh, contact us if you would like to know about our initiatives or if you're looking for funders to build together a new project or if you want to inform us about your project on our platform let's food ideas we try to translate the projects in french english and spanish so everyone can access thank you very much to our interpreters and to our speakers and thank you to all the participants who were here with us today uh, next webinar will be on March 13th to speak about producing local high quality food. Thank you very much and a good rest of the day.